John, thank you. And thank you to the Minnesota Clean Cities Coalition, the uh, Minnesota Pollution Control Agency, and also the Lung Association for hosting this event. Thanks for the opportunity to speak. I'm Brad Gehring. Um, I'm joined today by Craig Hartson. He's our regional maintenance manager. Um, he's based in Des Moines with myself at the corporate office. And then also we have two representatives from, from Orange EV, Christy and Rolf, just raise your hand. They'll be the experts to answer any technical questions that come up either uh, during or after our quick talk here. So um, I put together just a few slides to go through this morning. I'll do a little bit about uh, who's Ruan and uh, what we do, and then really spend most of the time talking about our fleet experience with the unit. I think I've got 15 or 20 minutes, if that's about right, and if you give me about a five-minute warning, um, then we can open it up for questions from there. So I've been with Ruan uh, for 17 years. I'm the VP of Fleet Services, and uh, so I have oversight for and I lead our team from the procurement of all assets to our maintenance team to the used equipment sales team, kind of cradle to grave on all of our equipment. Just a few uh, quick facts about the company. So we will celebrate our 90th birthday uh, next month. So we were founded in 1932. This is the one man, one truck story. Uh, Mr. Ruan started the company back in 1932, hauling a, a load of gravel and, and it grew from there. Uh, so our revenues today about 1.5 billion. Uh, we have dedicated warehouse space with our customers, over 13,000 active carrier partnerships. We have over 300 operations nationwide in 48 states, and we have about 50 shop locations across the country. We have about 5,000 team members, of which 80% uh, are drivers, and we own or operate about 4,000 power units and uh, about 10,000 trailers. Just very briefly on our, our what we do. So basically, we have uh, four primary services that we provide our customers. From a dedicated contract transportation, we do uh, dedicated uh, warehousing as well, managed transportation, and also brokerage support. Uh, primarily on what Craig and myself work with on the asset side of the business as uh, dedicated contract transport. So we're providing uh, services to customers who have a need for a, a trucking side of the business but don't want to necessarily do it themselves, so they'll outsource to a company like Ruon. So in that case, we'll bring in and we'll offer a driver only. We'll offer driver tractor or we'll offer driver tractor trailer and basically take care of whatever is needed to be done to meet the customer's needs. Just very briefly on our operating locations, again, about 300 locations, 50 shops across the U.S., and just a sample of some of our customer partnerships, uh, many of which are, are based here in Minnesota. Um, on the right side is our kind of breakdown in our various uh, areas that we work from food and beverage, manufacturing, metals, retail, grocery. Basically, we do uh, just a little bit of everything, whatever the customer needs. So dry van, refrigerated, flatbed, uh, tanker, container chassis, really whatever the customer needs, we'll take care of that business. From a sustainability standpoint, I'd like to spend just a minute on that. Uh, technology, green equipment, specifications. Uh, we do work very closely with our OEMs from Orange EV. We're also working with Freightliner and a few others on uh, what they're doing on the EV front. Uh, and just a few other notes on what we're doing. Last bullet point there states uh, we do have uh, Tesla tractors on order. Not quite accurate. We do have them on re reservation. Tesla's not quite uh, made the uh, switch yet to give us an official build slot. Just a little history of what Ruan has done in the electric space and green. So in 2017, uh, we made the switch and all of our refrigerated trailers were uh, added a 100% plug-in electric option. That's really uh, kind of the start um, on the trailer side. We did place reservations with Tesla back in 2017. So we're very early in the reservation process. We don't know exactly where we stack up, but we're early in that process. And uh, they have yet to give us official build slots, uh, but about once a quarter, they tell us uh, it's coming. Uh, in 2018, we did have, in the bottom right corner, we did have a prototype unit in Des Moines for a ride and drive. And that, uh, that was, that was uh, very, uh, very amazing and a lot of good Good interaction with the group there. In 2019, we were uh, operate. Uh, we were awarded a grant from the Iowa Economic Development for the, specifically for the Tesla project. In January 2020, we were uh, awarded a Minnesota Clean Diesel uh, Non-Road Dira grant to replace a terminal tractor. That's what we'll be talking about today. That's the top left photo of the orange EV. Uh, June of 21, or I'm sorry, September of 20, we did in-service that unit. We'll talk a little bit more about that. 
In June of 21, we were awarded a Missouri MEC DERA grant to replace one of our yard tractors there. Uh, that unit's been in service now about six months. And in October, uh, that unit was put in service. And in uh, last fourth quarter of last year, we did test uh, with Freightliner in Southern California and also in the Central Valley of California, uh, the EM2 straight truck and also the E Cascadia day cab. So we had an op opportunity to test both of those units. That's the top right and lower left uh, photos. So uh, why electric yard tractors? Uh, if we think about the EV space in, in general, as, as Ruan looks at it, uh, when we look at our customer base and the range required for uh, serving our customers, what we're seeing and hearing from most of the Class 8 over the road uh, folks is uh, a range of about 250, maybe 300 miles. And that is just short of what we actually need for most of our uh, operating uh, locations. We operate in a hub and spoke uh, for most of our uh, customer operations. So we're out and back from a distribution center. Um, and as those units go out and come back, we're, we're generally over that 300 mile mileage range. So we're not quite there yet with the technology. So when we look at where should we deploy units, we, we start in the yards is where we believe. We have about 50 yard tractors across the country. So we've identified uh, the first two here in Minnesota, one in Missouri. We've also been awarded grants and we're about to place orders for units in South Carolina, Oregon, and uh, Indiana. So uh, we think it starts there. And we're very diligently looking at each one of our operations to say, hey, where does this make sense for us? Uh, that, uh, in that type of an operation, uh, we, and we'll talk about it more, but we'll, we'll utilize opportunity charging. So anytime the driver goes on break, they change shifts, they uh, go to lunch, we're having the driver plug in the unit, kind of top off the battery. In that case, he's always ready to go and uh, utilize in the yard. So just a little bit about the uh, Orange EV partnership. Uh, I'll just mention the top right is the NACFI uh, Run On Less Electric Program. We participated in that uh, last year. We were one of 13 fleets uh, partnering with the Orange team, and thanks for working with us on that. Uh, so that is an opportunity uh, to take a look at some of the videos and really, really good information uh, on, on that program sponsored by NACFI last year. I think we started working with Orange back in uh, about 2017. Uh, and if my stats are off here, please, please share. Uh, but we're Orange was founded in 2012 in Riverside, Missouri. Uh, they're the first OEM to offer 100% electric Class 8 vehicles. They currently have over 400 EVs in service today. We started uh, meeting with the folks at Orange back in 2017, ordered our first unit in July of 2020, in service and in September. And I'll talk about stats here in just a minute. From a sustainability and uh, zero emission standpoint, uh, obviously, we're displacing all diesel gallons and all the associated emissions by using electricity. Uh, from a performance and driver satisfaction, uh, it's, it, it really knocks it out of the park for us. Uh, our picture, uh, driver picture here, this is Conrad Hansen, uh, was featured at, as part of the uh, Run on Less Electric program and just really did a, a very nice job, had a lot of great things to say. But smooth operation, uh, torque on demand, clean and quiet operation. Uh, and just uh, just ease of use. So a lot of a lot of great feedback from our drivers that are operating the units today. Uh, from a reliability and uptime standpoint, uh, obviously fewer parts, less wear and tear. And at the end of the day, uh, we're seeing uptime that exceeds 99% on this unit that we've had in service uh, here in Minnesota for about 20 months now. Uh, from an economic standpoint, uh, there we think about total cost of ownership when we look at any new unit, but we look at uh, the price to purchase the unit up front. So the capital expenditure on the front end, when we compare that to a diesel unit, it's about two to two and a half times more. Uh, however, uh, we're also changing the, the life expectancy of that unit. So a diesel unit, we would typically run five to six years. Uh, with, a, with this EV unit uh, from Orange, we're lifing that unit at 10 to 12 years. So even though the, the cost up front is two to two and a half times, we extend the life and actually depreciate that out over a longer period. Uh, the other components would be uh, the maintenance side, and uh, you know Craig can certainly talk about that uh, when we get to do the walk around with the unit. But it's uh, it's very very low maintenance. We talked to our technician this morning. He stated he's spending about 45 minutes to maybe an hour on a good quality PM for the unit. It's the walk around, check the tires, lights, brakes, grease the unit, uh, check it over, and he's done. We really haven't had much to do with that. Uh, much, much uh, detail there, and I'll share, uh, I'll share some stats on that in just a minute. Um, 
the Minnesota Pollution Control grant process, just very briefly on that. Uh, we, it, it took about a year for us to, to get through the entire process. I think we, we started the process in October of 2019. Uh, we submitted our application in December of 19. Uh, the grant was awarded in January of 2020. We spec'd out and ordered the unit in July and we had it delivered in September. And the funding was uh, provided in October of 2020. And then as part of the grant, we were required to, uh, and this is a quote from the, the grant, replaced engines, vehicles, and equipment must be scrapped or rendered permanently disabled before an invoice can be submitted. So our, our maintenance team had fun uh, permanently disabling our 2008 uh, Ottawa. Uh, so overall, uh, you know, the requirements on the grant and working with uh, Eric David and the team at the MPCA, uh, our feedback from our procurement uh, folks was that it was a very, very simple process. They were always accessible through email or phone calls, uh, always responsive to questions, concerns. Uh, MPCA would not hesitate to source uh, information from others if they didn't know the answers. And they had informative webinars and uh, advance of upcoming application deadlines. So very easy to work with. And the process went very well for us. Uh, you know, coming back to the TCO discussion, we talked about the upfront cost, we talked about the maintenance expense, and really then the last piece is either fuel or energy, and I have some stats on that, which I'll, I'll share in a minute, but that's, that was really been our substantial savings. And then overall fleet experience, uh, it's, it's, been, it's been very, very good overall. Go to, go to that slide, I'll let, let that sink in just a little bit as I kind of talk through some of the statistics on the unit. So we've, again, we've had this unit in service about uh, 20 months now. Uh, this unit has 160 kilowatt hour battery pack and an off-board charger, which I'll show. It's a 480 volt standard charge cabinet, which I'll show in just a minute. In those 20 months, we've operated life to date now 6,500 hours. That's an average annual run rate of about 3,700 hours, 300 hours a week or about sorry, 314 hours a month and 72 hours a week on average. Operationally, we're running it at a large distribution center in Otsego, which is just on the northwest side of the city near Rogers. Uh, we're running two long shifts, Monday through Friday. It's parked only between uh, midnight and 5 a.m. with some weekend work. Uh, they're doing approximately 60 trailer moves each day, which averages about 300 a week or about 15,000 moves in uh, a year spotting trailers at our distribution center. Uh, over those 20 months, we've consumed 36,000 kilowatt hours, and that is an average of about six kilowatt hours per, uh, per month on average. And we're using about 1,700 kilowatt hours uh, per month. And just as a point of reference, that compares to an average US household, which utilizes about 900 kilowatts per month. So roughly two times the use of an average residential home. Uh, life to date, we've displaced 10,400 gallons of fuel, diesel fuel, and the associated CO2 uh, with that. We do a quick calculation there. Uh, we're, we've displaced over 20 months about 116 tons of CO2 in, in that time period, or a run rate of about 68 tons per year. So this is our chart over time. You can see it, it uh, utilizes the highest level of uh, kilowatt hours during the winter months. We do have a heater package on the unit for running it here uh, in Minnesota, but it's performed very, very well even through the winter. And actually you see the lowest or the most efficient usage is in the, the summer months, and then it ramps up again in the winter. So it's, it's uh, been very, very good. Uh, back to total cost of ownership. What we would have spent in diesel fuel, uh, about $46,000 in 20 months. What we actually spend in energy, if we use, you know, it depends a little bit on your commercial rate and what time of day and everything, but if you use somewhere in a range of eight cents to 12 cents per kilowatt hour, we average that at about 10 cents. We spent about $3,600 on fuel over 20 months for energy. Just talk just very briefly about our Ruan process. Uh, the first thing we do, working with very closely with Orange EV, is we do a site evaluation and uh, vehicle information form. 
that tells us exactly what the unit is doing to make sure that we spec the unit, we get the right unit for the right uh, spec, uh, doing the right job in, in its operation. So we go kind of do a back and forth on that, work closely with Orange to finalize the specs. First thing we then do is look at incentive opportunities in the area to see if there's anything either at uh, the state level, maybe a local level, the federal level. Uh, we'll finalize pricing, cut our purchase order, uh, lead time right now, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you're still at about four months to get a new, a brand new unit. Three months, three to four, thank you. I did, and that's right, we're gonna hold you to that. And uh, they do have rentals available, uh, so that uh, ascent, you know, we could essentially get a unit within a couple of weeks of on-site uh, rental unit. During the time that the unit's being built, we're doing the on-site electrical prep to make sure that the site's ready. We take delivery of the unit, obviously we do safety training, we put the unit into service, and then we then it's preventative maintenance and monitor the unit. And uh, last slide is just a quick overview of the on-site charging. This is a photo of our uh, charging cabinet on-site in uh, Otsego. Uh, it's optimized for 483 phase. Very simple installation. Uh, they do recommend bollards, which I think are just outside the photo there. Uh, but bollards in the area, and they rec recommend that we place it where the drivers are located. So we put it, uh, the stairs right there, right to the driver's break room. Uh, so he or she pulls up, plugs in the unit. Again, when they go on break, when they uh, switch shifts, when they go to lunch, uh, when they park it for about, I think, four hours uh, overnight during the week, uh, it's plugged in and topped off. Uh, the upper section of the, the right-hand side of the slide is what's uh, required of the customer or the on-site. And then the lower section is the cabinet and the unit provided by uh, Orange EV. So again, uh, I think just to wrap up here, uh, I mentioned that we currently have uh, the two units in service. We have a few units that we're looking at in uh, Oregon, Indiana, South Carolina, uh, grants that are awarded, and we're actively working about, on about eight or 10 other opportunities around the country uh, specific to our yard operations. In addition to that, we're looking at every one of our 50 yard tractors to say, where does this make sense? And we're kind of sorting and grouping those, say what's the most efficient and uh, best ROI uh, for, for Ruan to put units in to save uh, our customers money and uh, from a sustainability standpoint as well. So I think uh, that wraps up. Open it up for questions. Are we good on time, John? Thank you, Brad. I'm Bill Gain from Red Wing. Um, did I hear your figures right that you said $46,000 in diesel versus $3,600 uh, $3, in electric? That's correct. That's a 92% reduction in That's energy correct. costs. 92% in how many months? 20 months. 20 months. That is amazing. That should make everybody's draw, jaw drop and go One back part. and start buying these things like crazy. Thank you. Yeah, and that is calculated at uh, diesel at 450, which is an average over those 20 months. So today, you'd recalculate it that at 550 in today's dollars, that would be even higher. Good question. Thank you. Anybody else? Hey, uh, Ryan McNee, Element Fleet. Um, how critical are you valuing incentives? from state or federal organizations to your decision to buy? Is it critical? Is a no-go, yes, no-go, or? Uh, yeah. Great question. The answer is it depends. Uh, I think when we started working with Orange EV on this, they stated to us that over half, probably two-thirds or more of their customers at the time were doing it only based on incentives. Uh, but today, with the spread, the price of diesel fuel, and then also looking at the amount of hours or miles you're putting on the unit, uh, it, the ROI is much faster, much quicker. So it, it's important, we always look for that opportunity, uh, but it, it does and can pencil without grant funding, provided you have enough hours or miles that you're putting through that unit over whatever your timeline or horizon is. So it's, it's important, but uh, it, it does work without. Paul Sanders, Element Fleet. Where wouldn't uh, an electric 
tractor fit in with your with Ron's uh, current setup? Yeah, great question. We have uh, specific to yard tractors. So, like I said, we have about 50 across the country. We're looking at every one of those operations today. And for us, uh, we're, we're, we don't see uh, a good fit today is very low use. So if the unit's at a site and used only maybe half a shift or occasional use, or just not using that many hours, uh, and there's no grant funding available in that area, it does not make sense for us from a ROI perspective. It does from a sustainability standpoint, but not from an ROI perspective. Um, over the road units, we're having, we're looking at that very, very closely today. And again, we have to be, we're looking at that 250 to 300 mile range is just not quite enough for us yet, but the, the technology's coming, so we'll be there soon. So I'd say, you know, if we look at our fleet of 50 units uh, in the yards, we're probably 75 to 80% of those, I think we could we could flip to, to EV and uh, the ROI would be there in addition to the sustainability. Great question. Yeah, the, the question was, is there any question? Um, people can enter questions in the chat and I'll read them to them. There's none about your presentation right now. There was something about to, to Eric David regarding the DERA grant and he can talk about that when he when he talks in a bit, but no other questions submitted. Thanks. Okay, well, Craig, myself, and Christian Rolf will be out uh, by the LGV units after lunch, so please ask us any questions at that time. Thank you very much.